August 29th, 1435. Saint Dominic of Blessed Memory once said, Through the rosary and the scapular, Mary will save the world. It has been my instruction to write down the life and works of our Venerable Simon of the Stock, the one who received the Blessed Scapular from the Most Holy Mother of God. Some have come to question the power of the Brown Scapular of Mount Carmel, and it is my hope that Our Lady will guide my pen as I write, so as to strengthen the faith of those who read it. The Carmelites cherish the Brown Scapular, their most precious possession given to them by the Mother of God, and know that once they make their final profession, they are promised protection from eternal death. Simon of the Stark was born in the year 1165, in the glorious land of England. His parents were not wealthy, but they were devout parents who raised Simon in the faith of Christ. Did you hear? The king is to do public penance for the murder of Bishop Thomas Becket. Is that so? We should thank God then for his repentance. What did the king do, mother? Simon, don't you remember the story of the good bishop of Canterbury? Oh yes, do you mean the bishop who was killed by the king? Yes, my son. He's going to be a saint now, remember? Did I see him? Yes, back when you were very young. You, your father, and I went to see the bishop come back from his exile in France. You were but an infant at the time, but you were there. I'll never forget his face. So tall and pale and so sad. The king should renounce his throne for killing the bishop. I pray every day that he would lead the life of example. Simon, where are you going? I'm going to my tree. Where is Simon going? What's his tree? I'm sorry, did I upset him? Oh no, don't worry. There's a very large oak tree on our land. It's rotted out in the middle, and Simon has a shrine to the Blessed Mother there. He would spend all day there if I let him. Simon was well raised by his parents, but he felt the call to a higher life at an early age. So early, in fact, he was barely 12 years old when he asked his parents' permission to live as a hermit. His parents thought he was joking at first, but after a while they realized he was very serious. They were deeply afflicted and were unsure on what they were to do. Martha, I think we need to consider this. Are we just, just going to let him go? He's far too young to think about leaving now. Be of good heart, my love. If the Lord is calling our son to be a hermit at his young age, God will provide for him. But this idea is a boyish whim, and we will know in a few days' time. There are many hermits in these days. God knows we need them from all the evils that are going on in the Holy Land. Who are we to hold back his vocation, if this is indeed what God wants him to do? I think it is best to let things play themselves out. You are right, my love. If God wishes to have our son, who are we to stop him? Oh, but I will miss him so much. Have you heard of the hermit who lives in a tree? Yes, of course I have, my boy. That is where we are going now, to gain his blessing and prayers for the journey ahead of us. How long has he been in that tree? More than twelve years now, to be sure. My wife goes to him when someone in our family gets sick, or we need prayers for something. He lives right over there in that large oak tree. What does he eat? I don't know. Don't ask such foolish questions, my page, if knighthood is thy aim. I have heard that he never uses a fire, even in the dead of winter. Flos carmeli vitis florigera, 
splendor celi, virgo pueplua singularis. Sir, we have a favor to ask. What can I do for you? We are departing on the morrow to follow King Richard the Lionhearted to answer the Pope's call to the crusade. And we want you to pray for us that the Lord will bring us home again safely to England. Will you pray for us? We have brought some food. Of course I will pray for you. I will ask the Blessed Mother to protect you and St. Michael to guard you. Please take the food and give it to the poor. I am well enough here. Pray that we may rid the Holy Land of the cursed Turks and then we may bathe the ground with their blood. Remember, Jesus conquered souls with love and prayer, not the sword. I cannot pray for that intention. I will pray for your safety, however. Will you pray also for the well-being of our families? Be of good heart. You have given yourselves to God, and God is not outdone in generosity. Now, I have a question for you, gentlemen. I heard the king passed away this year, and I have been praying very much for him. Did he die with the sacraments night? He died reconciled with the Lord and the church, much to the surprise of many. God be praised. Remember, love your enemies and fly from sins and its occasions. Ah, these are the words of a holy man. What is thy name, brother? My name is Simon. May God bless you, sir, and thank you for your prayers. Simon, Simon the Holy Hermit. Simon, who lives in the stock of an oak. Simon of the Stock. Simon grew in wisdom and holiness, practicing austerities in the shelter of his oak tree. It was true Simon spent more than 15 years in his shelter but he was not alone. Simon became so close to God that he was given the grace of receiving a vision, the Most Holy Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Simon, do not be afraid. I am Mary, the Mother of God. My son, I have chosen you for a special work. You shall be a priest of God and a member of my order the brothers of Mount Carmel. My servants in Mount Carmel are hermits like yourself who live in the Holy Land and do penance for the sins of the world. Only when the world is consummated will men know how much they owe to these simple hermits who are consecrated to me. Trust in Jesus and he will give you strength. It will not be easy for you and you will have much to suffer. There will always be brothers in Mount Carmel upon this earth. Soon they will come to England and bring many souls to know and love my son. While Simon was in England, living a life of austerity as a hermit. The Carmelite brothers, who dwelled on the mountain of Carmel, were facing great difficulties and tribulation from the Muslims in the Holy Land. Nonetheless, the monks rejoiced in their suffering and offered it up to God in reparation. Father Burkhardt, there are Turks at the gate. Be at peace, brother. If God wills us to live, we will live. If God wills us to die, we shall die for him and in reparation for sins committed by poor sinners. Summon the brethren to the chapel. Open up this gate in the name of Allah. My brothers, my sons in Christ, Tonight we offer ourselves freely into the hands of God. I want every one of you at this moment to pray to Our Lady for two intentions. First, that the most holy will of God might be followed tonight. Second, if God has seen us worthy of being martyrs, ask our mother for the grace of a holy death. 
wait here and pray that God's will be done for us. Christian devils, let us in! In the name of the cross, I command you to halt! Fear the sword I hold in my hand. It has ended many a man's life and thirsts for Christian blood. I fear not your sword, but for your own soul. A soul that will be damned if you spill the blood of my innocent brothers. <laughs> you are taunting a dangerous man, Christian. But you have the courage of a valiant king. What is your name? My name is Father Bricard a disciple of St. Berthold. It is he who founded our community here. Please, leave us alone. We are causing no trouble for you. You are a Christian community dwelling on Muslim lands. You encourage others to live as Christians. Let the men go, but destroy and burn everything here. You have gained the freedom of your men tonight, Father Brokaw. But you must depart for your Christian lands to the north, and never return here. If I receive reports that you again set up residence here, I will not be so generous in sparing your lives. Joan, are you going into town today? Yes, I am, Maria. Let's go together. You are just the person I want to see. How are you on this fine day? I'm very well, thank you. Have you heard from your brother? Alas, I have not. He has been gone for two years now with the king on the Crusades, and I have not heard from him. I heard a while back that he was killed during a battle saving another knight, but I do not know for sure. Oh, I'm so sorry. I will pray for you and your family, Joan. Who's that coming down the road? My goodness, it is Simon of the Stock. He hasn't traveled into town for 20 years. This is certainly strange. I wonder what brings him here. Brother Simon, can we do anything for you? God reward you for your offer. Please pray for me, for I am going to Oxford to study. The Lord wishes me to become a priest so that I can better serve him in the future. I couldn't think of a better man to become a priest than you, sir. You would not say that if you knew me well, my daughter. It is only under obedience to the will of God that I go to Oxford, not for any other reason. God reward you, and please pray for me. My father was living a wicked life a few years ago, and I went to Simon for prayers. Once in a week, my father had made a good confession and turned around his life. He now attends Mass regularly and never frequents the taverns anymore. That hermit is a saint. If there were more religious like him, there would be no need for a crusade. The world would be converted in a day. Simon entered Oxford and excelled at his studies. Meanwhile, the servants of Our Lady of Mount Carmel no longer had a home and took up shelter in a neighboring town. Soon after the attack, King Richard the Lionhearted made an agreement with Saladin that Christian pilgrims would not be persecuted and killed anymore. The Carmelites consecrated a chapel to the Blessed Mother in thanksgiving for her protection. Then the members of the society held a council and asked Albert, the Holy Patriarch of Jerusalem, to write a simple rule for their order so they could live a more structured community life. The Patriarch gladly did so and presented it to the Carmelites on a cold winter day in 1205. My brothers, you have asked that I write a rule for you that you may live a more structured community life as brothers here on Mount Carmel. I will read it to you as I have written it. Your Eminence, God reward you for writing our rule for us. Albert, called by the grace of God to be Patriarch of the Church of Jerusalem, 
greets his beloved sons in Christ and the other hermits living in obedience to your superior. Near the spring on Mount Carmel, the salvation and the Lord and the blessing of the Holy Spirit be upon you. First thing I lay down is that you shall have a prior, one of yourselves, chosen by the unanimous consent of all, or of the greater and more mature part. All the others shall promise him obedience, fulfilling it by deeds, as well as chastity and the renunciation Your loins are to be girded with the belt of chastity. Your breast is to be protected by holy thoughts, for the scripture says, Holy thoughts will save Put on the breastplate of justice, so that you may love the Lord your God from your whole heart, your whole soul, and your whole strength, and your neighbor. In all things, take up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to distinguish all the darts of the evil one. Without faith, indeed, it is impossible to please the God. The helmet of salvation is to be placed on your head, so that you may hope for salvation from the one Savior, who saves his people the sword from of the their Spirit, sins. which is the word of God, is to dwell abundantly in your mouths and hearts. So whatever you have to do is to be done in the word of the Lord. I have written these articles briefly, establishing a way of life for you, according to which you are to conduct yourselves. If anyone does more, the Lord himself, when he comes again, will repay him. You are, however, to use prudence, which is the moderator of virtue. Bishop Albert, on behalf of all of us here, may God reward you for writing this rule of life for us. We shall abide by it and fulfill it to the very letter. May the peace of God be with you, and God bless you. Simon entered back into the world to become a priest of God, and after seven years at Oxford, he was ordained a priest. He was forty years old. After he was ordained, Simon went back to living a life of austerity in his oak tree. Meanwhile, back at Mount Carmel, an important discussion took place which would change the fate of the Carmelite order throughout the world. Father Picard, may I speak to you in private? Of course, Father Mark. Pax tecum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Father, I would like to found a community of the Carmelites in England, my homeland. So you wish to depart from this holy mountain? Yes, Father. There was a group of crusaders traveling back to England, and they said that they could accommodate us on our journey. There is more than just you who wishes to go. There are four of us, Father Picard. Brother Michael, Brother Leopold, Brother Simeon, and myself. I will pray about it, my son. I do not want to see you leave, because you are one of the best priests that I have ever known. But then again, I could not think of anyone better to propagate our order in England. When did the Crusaders depart for England, Father Mark? They depart in a fortnight, Father. God reward you for your consideration. I will give you my blessing. Benedictio Omnipotens Deus. The elected prior of the monastery, Father Brocard, did let the fool travel back to England in the end. Father Mark was elected the prior of the traveling party. Their journey was perilous, but they arrived safely back to their homeland in the year 1210. They were given land to fund a monastery by Sir Thomas Archer in Kent, which was in the same area as Simon was dwelling as a hermit after his ordination. Father, what a surprise. Could I have your blessing? Of course. Benedicat omnipotens Deus, Patri et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Descendat super te, et mariet semper. Amen. From whence do you come, and to what order do you belong? I arrived here recently with three other men. I am Brother Michael of the Servants of Mary of Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel? What are you doing here in England? Have you heard of us before? Brother Mark, my superior, was granted permission from our prior to come to England and start a monastery here. From whence do you come, Father? I am a hermit here in Kent, 
and live in a tree a few minutes' walk from here. When can I speak to your prior? As soon as you wish, Father. Come this way. Please wait here while I speak to Father Mark. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Greetings in Christ Jesus. Pax te cum. Father, I met a priest out in the forest while collecting food, and he wishes to talk to you. He is a hermit, and I brought him here. God reward you, Brother Michael. Send him in. Greetings in Christ Jesus. Pax te cum. Et cum spiritu tua. I am Father Mark, prior of our small, newly founded community here. What can I do for you? Father, I have been living as a hermit for more than twenty years, waiting for your arrival in England. I fear that I will soon die of joy, seeing that the Lord's will has been accomplished. Father, please consider me for joining thy order. Prayer, penance, chastity, and devotion to Mary, the most blessed mother of God, are the duties of a Carmelite. How is it you have come to know of us before we set foot in England? The Blessed Virgin told me to wait for you. I see. You are not the first man I have known to be directed to this order by the Mother of God. My son, you may enter our novitiate this very day. God reward you, Father Mark. I will offer Mass for the intentions of this order today. Remember, prayer, chastity, penance, and devotion to Mary, the Most Holy Mother of God. These are the duties of a Carmelite. May God bless you, and please pray for me. It soon became evident that spending twenty years as a hermit boosts a man's spiritual perfection to phenomenal heights. Father Mark noted this and summoned Simon to his quarters one day after Community Vespers. Greetings in Christ Jesus. Pax te cum. Et cum spiritu tuo. You wish to see me, Father Mark? Simon, I have come to the decision that you are to be sent back to Oxford to receive your degree in theology. Oh, but Father, I could not bear to enter the world again. It is so full of sin and it is heartbreaking to behold. I would rather stay here and do penance for our Lord. Ah, but Father Simon, one act of obedience is more meritorious than a thousand years of the harshest penance. You will leave in two days for Oxford to finish your degree. I will do as you will, Father Mark. Who is at the gate? Pax Tecum. We have come from Mount Carmel. My brothers, come in. There are so many of you. Yes, Father, there are twenty-three of us. We have been instructed to found two more monasteries here in England. The Saladin made another visit to us shortly before we left the Carmel. He threatened that if we did not leave, he would burn us out again. How is Father Abbot Bricard doing? Is he well? Father Bricard is taken ill. He is requesting that you should be appointed Vicar General of all Western monasteries in Europe. Ah, oh, but I am getting too old for this kind of work. I think I know what I can do to make this order thrive here in the West, though. I will write to Father Bracard immediately. Come in, we are about to start Vespers. My dear Father and Prior, Father Bracard, greetings in Christ Jesus and the peace of Christ be with thee. As you may remember at our parting, I am not as young as I once was. I am approaching seventy years of age now, and cannot carry on this work for much longer. It is my desire to place another man as Vicar General, a man much like you, Father Bricard, in that he gives his whole being to serve God, the Church, and the Carmelite Order. His name is Simon of the Stock, and I strongly recommend placing him as the Vicar General of the Western Provinces. He was a hermit for twenty-five years, studied at Oxford, and was ordained a priest before he entered our Carmel here in Kent. There is no one more suited for the job that you wish to bestow upon me than Father Simon, through the most sorrowful mother, Father Mark. Greetings in Christ Jesus. Pax tecum. 
Et cum spiritu tua. I received a letter yesterday concerning you, Father Simon. Father Brocard, the prior of Mount Carmel and general superior of our order, has appointed you vicar general of the western provinces of the Carmelite order. Father, I have been a Carmelite for just three years, two of which I have spent at Oxford. Surely the letter is mistaken. Simon, you are the best candidate that we have to fulfill this position. I cannot oversee our province. I am far too old, and the other members of our order are not as experienced as you are in the ways of God. What say you? Father, I am a sinful man. However, if you wish me to accept this position, I will take it without a word. Thank you, Simon. God has destined you to do great things for the Carmelite order. It will be hard, and you will have to suffer much. But God is with us, and the Blessed Virgin will protect us. Being the Vicar General of the Western Provinces was not an easy job. For eight years, Simon labored and traveled, overseeing the Carmelite rise in the West. Slowly but surely, the Carmelites began to take root. More and more men began entering the order, and the order was growing. New monasteries were springing up in England, Germany, and Spain. But soon problems began to arise. Problems that laid a heavy burden on Simon's shoulders and threatened the survival of the Carmelites in all of Europe. Father Mark, may I come in? Yes, Simon, come in. I apologize, I cannot get up on my feet anymore. My body is desiring to part with my spirit, but it is not my time yet. How can I help you, my friend? Father, I am leaving for Rome in a fortnight. Simon, you, you just arrived back from France less than a week ago. Why on earth do you need to go to Rome? I wrote to our Holy Superior, Father Brocard, about the crisis we are facing here in Europe. Our situation is becoming desperate. The Fourth Lateran Council has stated that new monastic rules are strictly forbidden and that new religious orders have to adopt a form of rule already written. Bishops and parish priests are afraid to send young men to our order because they believe we are in violation of this canon, and members of our own order are questioning their vocations. Just this week, I received news that five of our members in Cambridge left Carmel and entered the Dominicans. We cannot maintain our order if the flow of vocations is drying up. Our rule was given to us and approved in 1206 by the Patriarch of Jerusalem. Is that not good enough? The Eastern Church is separated from the Western Church, and those against us say we are approved in Palestine, but not in Europe. They want us to move back to Palestine and not to trouble them anymore. What are you going to do? Father Brocard told me in a letter to go to Pope Honorarius III and tell him of our plight and ask for his protection. If he can offer a bowl of protection for us, we will be safe in Europe for now. What will we do if he does not approve it? Our order in the West is doomed. After Simon received the papal bull that protected the Carmelite rule in the Roman Catholic Church, he went on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land and was able to meet Father Brocard in person. Simon returned to Rome in 1229 and received an additional bull of protection from Pope Gregory IX. For 14 years, Simon oversaw the slow but steady rise of the Carmelite order in Europe. In 1243, a council of the Carmelite order was called for at Mount Carmel. So Simon of the Stock, now almost 80 years old, made his second journey to the Holy Land. It was decided in the council that the majority of the Carmelite order was to move from the east to the west, from the Holy Land into Europe.
Father Simon, a letter for you. God reward you, my son. Can you read it to me? My eyes are a bit tired today. Certainly, Father. To Simon Stock, superior of the Carmelite Order, your rule is in direct opposition of Canon 13 of the Fourth Lateran Council, regardless of the bull published by Pope Innocent IV. You are causing much confusion within our diocese, and I will not stand for it. Remove your order, or I will excommunicate all the Carmelites within my diocese, and will encourage my fellow bishops to do the same. Signed, the Bishop of Canterbury. God reward you, my son. Father, what are you going to do? I am going to seek comfort in my most holy mother. Do not worry about this. Nothing comes to pass that is not seen by God. He allowed this for a reason, and all we can do is thank him for it. Oh, my mother, I need your help in this hour. The trials of this hour are crushing me, but I know that they are nothing compared with the sufferings you experienced at the passion of your son. Flower of Carmel, fruitful vine, splendor of heaven, none compare. Simon, do not be afraid. Receive my beloved son this habit of thy order. This habit shall be a privilege to thee and for all Carmelites, that whoever dies clothed in this scapular shall not suffer eternal fire. Rather, he shall be saved. It is the badge of salvation, a shield in time of danger, and a pledge of special peace and protection. Do not fear the men who are opposing you at this time. My son refuses me nothing and I will protect my order of Carmelites. These sufferings are passing. The Carmelites will do much in comforting my son's heart, which is so hurt by the sins of men. The 18th of July, 1251. Yesterday at noon, I was giving the Most Reverend Father Simon Stock counsel on a Marian apparition he received the day before regarding the habit of our Holy Order. I must say that I was skeptical of it based on his age. He kept insisting on its authenticity, but I, like St. Thomas the Doubter, finally said I would not believe in the vision unless I witnessed a miracle on its behalf. At that precise moment, Lord Peter of Linton, a sincere and practicing Catholic lord here in England, burst into our meeting with startling news. Lord Peter of Linden came in and told the two priests that his brother was on the verge of death and being obstinate in his sins. The two priests hastened to the Lord Peter's house. We arrived at the house of Lord Peter, and instantly I knew that the man was possessed. As soon as we entered the house, the sick man ground his teeth and rolled his eyes like a furious animal. St. Simon, seeing that he was about to expire and had already lost the use of his senses, made the sign of the cross and placed upon him the holy scapular of Carmel. Then lifting his eyes to heaven, he prayed to God to give the unfortunate man time for repentance, that a soul bought with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ might not become prey of the demon. All at once the sick man regained his strength, recovered the use of his senses, and making the sign of the cross, cried against the demon. The poor sinner, having received this precious grace from heaven's queen, renounced his sinful past, went to confession, and received the last sacraments. He died in the peace and friendship of God just a few hours later. That night, in a dream, Lord Peter saw a vision of his deceased brother, who told him that, I have been saved through the most powerful queen and the habit of that man as a shield. These events are now the talk of the town, and Simon's vision is being promulgated from this miracle. When we arrive back at the monastery, I beg Simon to forgive me and to ask pardon of the Blessed Virgin on my behalf. He just smiled and said, I had not offended anyone. 
and the miracle was the answer to my request. I am still in awe of this simple man and his devotion to the Most Holy Mother of God. I will always wear the scapular of Mary, for through it I am promised salvation. Simon Stock oversaw the construction of monasteries in the cities of Cambridge, Oxford, London, York, Paris, Bologna, and Naples, all of which were centers of learning. Simon Stock helped transform the Carmelite order from desert hermits to a thriving Western order that still survives to this day and has produced some of the most glorious saints of modern times. But most importantly, it was through Simon Stock that the Church received the grace of the Brown Scapular. Simon Stock passed from this life on July 16, 1265. He was 100 years old. He lived a life of austerity from the age of 12 and is an outstanding example of holiness to all men. Soon after Simon's death, the confraternity of the Brown Scapular was founded so that the laity as well as the Carmelites could gain graces for, from the Holy Scapular of Mount Carmel. Numerous popes have graced the Brown Scapular with indulgences, but the greatest power is that of protection given to Simon by the Mother of God. The Brown Scapular is a reminder of our consecration to the Most Holy Mother of God and that she will protect us from the attacks of the devil in the hour of our death. Parish priests have been given the power to enroll their parishioners in the confraternity of the Brown Scapular, and I encourage every single one of you to become enrolled. I offer this story and everything it contains to the Holy Mother of God, that those who hear it may be touched and given the grace to become closer to Mary through St. Simon's Stock and the Brown Scapular. St. Simon's Stock, pray for us. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Pray for us.